Hi everyone and welcome back for today's video. A couple of videos back you might have seen me making these background layer pores just on 50 cm round canvases by using um, three colors. It was a white, a dark green and a metallic green and some gold for one of them. <laughs> so this is one of the canvases and as said in this video we are going to bring those to the next level. How so? Just by painting something onto them. As you can see on the canvas, I already sketched out my design for the painting to come. And when it comes to designing your painting that you're going to put onto your acrylic pour, you have different options to go for. Just recently I've learned that using a graphics tablet is a really handy and easy method designing your painting onto your pour, just to see how everything would going to look in the end. But when it comes to bringing the initial sketch onto your artwork, there are again different ways that you can approach this. The method that I like using the most is actually the tracing method. So designing and sketching out your artwork, your design initially, and when everything fits, just use some baking paper or something similar and trace it. I did this here as well off camera and what I did, I actually zoomed the design to the size that I needed onto my computer screen. I flipped it around horizontally, put the baking paper or tracing paper onto my screen, used a charcoal pencil, traced the outlines and then when everything was done I just flipped it around, put it onto my pour painting, which again comes pretty handy because those pour paintings are a bit sticky for the first days when the pour is dry, so this paper at once sticks to it and second you can just use your fingernail following the lines and then everything will be glued traced onto your artwork which is pretty handy. So you're not going to risk damaging your acrylic paint layer and everything is just perfectly on there. If you like and do not want your lines to be smudged you can use a fixative spray and spray it over there just to have this fixed. I myself didn't do this here. If you feel comfortable enough freehanding your design just go for it, whatever you feel will work best for you. When I had my outlines down on the canvas, I just used some acrylic paints and shaded in the flowers itself. I did this just to cover up the background, so I didn't want the green tone background to shine through and to give me a first impression where the lights and the darks are going to be. Whether you stay with the acrylics or switch over to oil colors, which I did after the first layer was down, you can decide whether you go rough or softer. If you use acrylics for the entirety of your painting, I would recommend perhaps going a bit softer, because as acrylics are kind of translucent, especially the whites, you might see the under layer through the next layer to come. So if your base layer is really rough, um, you might see this through for a couple of layers and this is probably something you do not really want to have especially for flowers as they probably look best if they are really soft. Again, as I'm going to switch over to oils I really did not bother so much so I did kind of work roughly. I used thicker amounts of paints just to have everything covered nicely and if I end up having some texture I really do not bother at all. Given the fact that the acrylic pour already has some texture and pouring lines visible on the pour itself, I will have some kind of texture anyways in the final painting. So having some more texture due to the thicker acrylic paint, who cares? If you care, of course, be a bit more careful. <laughs> If you wonder why I chose the acrylics to make an underpainting, is just the fact that it's really quickly drying. So I could have used the oil colors right away, but they tend to dry much much slower and I work in layers with oil colors so I really really rarely do a la prima, so everything in one session. I like to paint on a dried surface which is really handy with using acrylics. For this painting I actually didn't really care um, fixing the charcoal lines, so having the fact that I paint with acrylics partly over them kind of fixes them. Of course they are going to smudge a bit, but as I paint over with the oils in the end, this is not so much of a deal. When my initial acrylics design was down, everything was kind of okay looking. I just used one of these wet kitchen wipes, you know those, to clean your kitchen and stuff. I'm pretty sure you have those as well. I actually just went over the entire painting and this cleaned up the yeah the residue, the, the rest amount of charcoal powder that I had on there. 
So everything went pretty nicely and is clean to start using the oil colors. And this process pretty much is the same as when I use the acrylics. I prefer oils because they are more opaque. So even the first layer of oils applied gives you a better saturation. And it is just so much easier blending your colors. So as oils are so slow drying, you have way more time blending your colors, getting the shapes and the shades right. And even tweaking the shades is much easier than having an acrylic paint, which is rather quickly drying. I am just not really used to use the acrylics for these kind of paintings. I have seen artists out there that do tremendous work with acrylics only, so really, really amazing. I'm just not at this skill level. So hands down, I just use the oil colors way more often than I use the acrylics for detailed painting especially. And depending on your painting style, your preferences or your skill set, you can decide if you want to make your oil painting layer just in one session, so a la prima, or if you work as I do in different kinds of layers. So make a thin layer, let it dry, paint another layer over there, tweak it even more, um, change the values, sizes, whatever. This is really a question of taste. So I like to paint in layers as it's easier and more convenient for me to do and it's easier to correct things. But if you like to work a la prima and have everything done in one session, make the brush strokes visible, perhaps paint more impressionistically, whatever you prefer, it is your painting, go for it and don't look back. <laughs> For the color range that you can see here in this painting, it was pretty simple, so I decided for a paints gray, which is a dark bluish black kind of color. It is just nicer than using pure black. So pure black is a warmer color, which gives you a deep contrast, but this paints gray looks a bit more natural when it comes to these shadows that white flower petals kind of create, you know. So I thought it would look better using the paints gray. And given the fact that Paints Gray also makes beautiful, beautiful shades in combination with the white, just came as a plus, I'd say. And of course, you can also mix your painting styles. So if you want to have your flower petals kind of smooth and soft, but the stems perhaps, but the rest of the painting more kind of abstract, rough or impressionistic, Go for it. Again, it is totally up to your decision and the good thing with the oil colors, if you think it didn't really nail it, you can just let it dry and paint over it or just scrape it off and paint over it. There are just so many possibilities that you can express yourself the way you want it. To not talk all the time, I'm going to let you watch this to the end. I'm going to make a couple more additions to the end and let you know what I did. And other than that, enjoy the music! <laughs>
I must say, this painting onto these acrylic pores really, really is a fun concept. The fun fact, the acrylic pour itself took me about 10 minutes and the painting onto it about 4 hours, not calculating any drying time. So the entire process of painting these flowers onto this artwork is a matter of a week, I'd say. So I let it dry in between to have the first layer set and painted the second layer over it just to give it more definition and make it softer. And I also glazed some pink into the petals to really, really have a soft touch of the pink. You know, those magnolias come in white and in pink. It's actually a bright pink when you have the pink ones, but I didn't want to add pink against the, the greenish background. It might have looked a bit odd. So there's just a really soft hint. Perhaps the camera even cannot catch it, but I thought it might look cool in the end. The final touches that I did when everything was dry were a bit rougher. So I used a bit more amount of the paint, used a tiny brush and dabbed it onto this to make the inner circles of the flowers and also the, the stems that are connected to the petals itself. So those are a bit rougher and you can see this in the end when I film over it. I hope at least. <laughs> but I thought those kind of 3D looking effects might add to the piece and it didn't fail me. So I must say really this was fun to do and I will make this concept a bit more often in the future. Not sure if I only go for flowers or if I switch between the themes. So we will see. Really really like this. Especially when it comes to a pour that kind of didn't come out as you expected kind of lack something or you just need something tweaked on there, this is kind of a good concept for it. So my final touches to this one were actually adding some metallic oil paint. So I already liked that I shaded in the surroundings of the flowers itself earlier, but I felt it kind of needed some more shimmer to it. So I used the metallic oil paint that I had, it's a gold, and just dabbed it on there to create some more shimmer and a bit more of contrast around your flowers. And really thought this might make it stand out a bit more. And that's actually it. So I varnished it in the end. So to cover everything up I used an oil paint varnish. You can see here on the camera what I did. You just let everything dry to the touch pour it onto there and I used the Gemvar from Gamblin for it, um, brushed it over there, let it dry and then your painting is sealed. And it is totally fine using an oil paint varnish over acrylics, but you should never use an acrylic paint varnish over oils. This is just not going to be archival. So yeah, this was enough talking for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching making me this project as much as I did. And I must say, this painting is a gift for a dear, dear friend. So, Cindy, my dear, I really, really hope you enjoyed watching the creation of your artwork. It is my pleasure and honor to send it over to you. And I really, really hope it arrives safely. If this was one of the first videos that you've seen of mine and liked what you've seen and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Give the video a like, this would really help me grow and of course also makes me see what you actually liked or if you didn't like a video so much. So if you like this concept, please also make sure to share this video with everyone who might want to see it. And yeah. Materials that I've used are linked down below in the video description. You can find my social media links there if you want to get in touch with me. And that's everything that I can say for this video. So thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you for watching. And other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day. Bye bye.